What's up YouTube? So today I'm gonna do a video on the basic things that you need to buy if you wanna start doing perfumery. So this is for if you haven't started yet and you wanna get into it, um, you wanna try doing it as a hobby um, and you just wanna know what are you gonna actually have to purchase in order to get started, then this video is gonna give you the bare minimum things um, and a couple of extra things that also might help. Um, and I'm going to try to put some links in the description as well so you can find these things online easily. Um, so let's get into it. Um, so yeah, firstly, the most important thing that you're going to find, um, apart from the ingredients themselves, is the scale that you use. Um, and this is very important because when you're weighing out your ingredients, you need to know that the weights that you're using are accurate. So um, you'll find that if you want to get into perfumery properly, using drops isn't good enough. Um, I've talked about that before, um, but basically, yeah, there are, there are certain reasons you don't wanna use drops um, and weight is just a better unit of measurement. So that means you're gonna to have to start buying a scale um, and start using that to measure everything out. Um, now, you can get some really cheap um, scales on Amazon for like 10 pounds or something. Um, and if you're really, really averse to spending money, then you could use those, you could try them. But the problem with using those cheap scales is usually they are to two decimal places of accuracy um, and sometimes they're not even fully accurate within those two decimal places. So what's going to happen is you're going to have to measure to the nearest decimal place, i.e. 0.1 of a gram, um, in order to make sure your formulas are accurate. So that means you're actually going to have to be weighing out quite a lot of material. Um, and therefore you're actually gonna spend more in ingredients costs because of the amount that you have to do in each formulation. Um, so what I prefer to do is take a bigger upfront cost on the scale and get a proper lab scale, um, get a scale that's accurate to three decimal places, um, and then you can start weighing to a much smaller amount but still be accurate, and then you can save the ingredients in the long run. Um, and if you're buying nice ingredients, then that's probably gonna be the most expensive thing. So I've got a scale from Kern, um, and I think there are lots of other brands out there, so you don't have to buy from this one, but it's just the one that I found when I was looking was um, a good lab quality option that was cheap and measured well to three decimal places. Um, so this one I think cost me about 160 pounds, um, but I think that kind of price range maybe uh, 150 to 200 is usually where these three decimal point scales lie um, but you may be able to find something cheaper so it's definitely worth looking around um, so yeah that's the scale um, and once you've got that the second most important thing is obviously all of the ingredients because that's what you're making the perfumes out of so um, again this is another massive topic um, maybe I'll do a separate video on it um, because there are lots of different types of ingredients um, and you know, how are you gonna know what you're gonna buy? But what I will tell you is there are some companies which do starter kits of about 20 to 50 ingredients um, and that's normally a good starting point because they usually design the starter kits with beginners in mind. Um, so that means they're probably gonna have the right kind of ingredients to get you started. Um, but really all you need to know is that there are things called naturals and things called synthetics. Um, so naturals are things like essential oils and absolutes and they're normally extracted from plants um, and synthetics are usually molecules that are made in a lab okay with synthetics basically you can often achieve more um, kind of commercial effects like that a really nice high quality uh, high street perfume kind of smell um, and naturals have a tendency to sometimes be a bit medicinal um, or something but that's not always the case um, normally the best perfumes have a good mixture of both Anyway, um, I would say you could probably start with as little as 10 ingredients um, and if you follow my other videos I'll say how because a lot of perfumery is actually learning a few ingredients really well um, and then you can really, once you know even with 10 ingredients for example, you could then try all the different combinations of blending those 10. So you could get a long way with just 10 before you ever had to go and buy some more and at that point you may find even that it's not for you. Um, so you're gonna save some money by doing that. Right, the next thing is perfumer's alcohol. So perfumer's alcohol is basically ethanol with a couple of little extra things added to it um, to make it um, legal to sell because um, I don't know where you live, but in the UK you can't buy pure ethanol unless you have a license. Um, 
which you can get if you're doing a business, which is something I do. But if you're just starting out and doing it as a hobby, um, it's not really worth you getting an alcohol license. So it's gonna be easier for you just to use perfume as alcohol. I do know in other countries like the United States, they have high proof alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, I think, um, that you can buy on sale. Um, like in the shops um, and that is quite strong I think it can be like 90% ethanol so I think that you can use that as well um, but if in doubt just try to get perfume as alcohol and that will be your your solvent the reason you need perfume as alcohol is because once you've got your perfume concentrate or your raw ingredients obviously they're really really strong um, and the way you make up a perfume from the raw ingredients is basically by diluting that concentrate down in ethanol. So a normal perfume might be diluted to say 20%, so that would be 80% is just filled up with ethanol. Um, but some things like um, eau de toilettes and eau de colognes can be um, even more dilute. So in that case, you might be putting something like 95% ethanol in. Um, so you need, you need to get some of that. Maybe to start with, I would say one liter is fine. Then you're gonna need some bottles. So this is where you're obviously gonna store all of your, first your diluted ingredients. So normally you're gonna to wanna to dilute them in order to smell them properly to learn them. So that's one use for the bottles. And the second one is to keep the formulas that obviously you've made and all of your trial formulas. Um, so I would say maybe start with about 50. Um, you can wash them and reuse them, but sometimes, um, especially the plastic lids, um, will get contaminated with um, an odor from what you put inside them and some materials especially sticky or really strong materials don't actually wash off properly and sometimes you just have to chuck them away so bear that in mind um, then you need some pipettes I would recommend you get disposable pipettes just because you never really want to reuse pipettes um, what happens if you reuse a pipette is inevitably some of the um, odor material will have been left around inside it um, and that can cause cross-contamination next time you use it and you really 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 do not want to cross-contaminate all of your materials. Um, if you get plastic pipettes, I know it's not super environmentally friendly but it's honestly the best way of doing it from a scientific perspective. Um, you really just want to buy a bulk load so you can get them really cheap. Um, I found boxes of 500 of them quite cheap. Yeah, I would say just grab one of those boxes and you should be good for a while. Um, and then the other thing, a bit like pipettes, that you're gonna just have to buy loads of to reuse is scent strips, though these aren't as bad for the environment. Um, these are just little sort of paper strips, but they're not regular paper. They're a kind of blotter paper that absorbs um, the liquid quite well. So these little cardboard strips, again, I would say buy like 500. You can usually find them quite cheap on the internet. Um, and this is how you're gonna be doing all of your evaluations and all of your smelling. So this is really important to have something quite simple, but you do just need to get them. And then finally, the other thing that you really need is some labels to put on your bottles, obviously in a pen to write on them. Um, but this shouldn't really be a problem because I think like normally you can just go down to the shop and buy some labels um, you know, it will cost you like next to nothing just to get a few labels, so that should be fine. Um, and then finally, I'm going to tell you some other things which are maybe technically non-essential, but I really would recommend that you have as well. So the first one is gloves. Um, now, normally if you're doing lab work, you would use um, these uh, latex or nitrile gloves. Um, and this is just gonna give you that barrier protection that in the situation you spill some of these chemicals on your skin and you have to realize that some of the chemicals that you could use because you're using them in such high concentration, they can be um, dangerous to some degree. So it's much, much better to protect yourself and have that precaution of using gloves just so you completely minimize the risk. Um, another thing is you might want to get some empty perfume bottles. So if you're if you finished a perfume or you want to do some on skin testing, um, a good thing is to put it in an empty perfume bottle, obviously, and then use that. So these you can buy online, but they are a bit more expensive. So maybe just buy a few, um, and then in the future you can always buy more. Um, and finally, um, you could go and buy a beaker 
This can be really useful to do mixing, especially if you're mixing larger quantities. Um, it's a bit easier to use sometimes than a bottle for mixing. Um, so I would recommend having a beaker and then also you could use a funnel and filter papers. If you're making a final perfume to use yourself or sell or give to someone else, then um, filtering the whole thing is generally a good thing to do as part of a good manufacturing practice before you do that. So it's not really necessary if you're just going to be starting out um, trying things um, and learning the hobby, but um, eventually when you get to your final stage and you actually have a kind of perfume that you like, then I would recommend buying a filter and a um, filter paper and a funnel. So yeah, um, that was just a really quick video explaining all of the different things you might need to buy. Um, I think that is all of the basics. Um, if you've got any questions, please just ask me in the comments and I will try to find the answer for you. Um, again, I'll try to leave some links in the description for all of these things so you can kind of at least see how much they're going to cost you um, and you know where you might be able to find them if you can't find them online yourself. And yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching the video. Um, yeah, let me know what you thought and yeah, have a nice day.